Welcome. How'd you get that? Coach, gave me a lift home. And he just bought you a slab of beer. Crazy, huh? He said we should enjoy being delinquents while it's still cool. All right, coach. <laughs> That's a lot of wood. Sarah? Fred? Where's Tara? She said she had to study. She's getting kind of stressed. <laughs> you serious? Sam's gonna be a cinch. As if you wouldn't come party here. <laughs> there is no way I'm gonna pass English. English? All you have to do is just know the quotes. You turned English with Mr. McGarvey. I hadn't even read that book about the pig, but memorized three quotes from it. Bam. A minus. I keep picturing all these small kids playing baseball in this big field of Ryandall. Heaps of small kids and no one's around. No one big anyway. And I'm standing on the edge of some crazy cliff. I mean, if they're running and they're not looking where they're going, I have to come out from somewhere and catch them. That's all I do all day. I'd just be the catcher in the Ryandall. Oh, so is that a metaphor, Brett? Okay, mate. Firstly, there's no mention of baseball in that book. Watching this show about Amish people the other day. What are Amish people? Big beards. Yeah, big beards, no electricity. So anyway, these kids grow up in a pretty chilled out community and farm and stuff, and when they turn 18, they're given like a year off just to go totally wild. They like sleep with whoever they want, drink to excess, do heroin, go on a murder spree, all the cool stuff, whatever. And their parents just turn a blind eye. It's a rite of passage. Heroin. When the year's up, they decide whether they want to return to the community and continue to be Amish or not. Wow. Yeah, it'd suck to do all that waiting, but imagine how amazing that year would be after 18 years of not having fun. Yeah, crazy. It'd be like how great sex is when you've had none for ages. Totally. Hey, catch. Mom, it'll be fine, I promise. They'll love you. All right, let's do this. I'm gonna go and change. There's a fridge. I'll be back in a sec, okay? Yo. Yo. I'm Jackson. I came with Michelle. I heard. So you're a bit of a musician then? Um, yeah, I guess so. I dabble. How long have you two guys? She's the best person I know, Michelle. I'm going to meet a lot of people in my life, but I doubt I'll ever meet anyone with a heart like hers. Michelle, where's the first boyfriend? There are a lot of boys who'd like to be in your shoes, cowboy. Um, I don't know if I technically am her boyfriend. Yeah, have one of these while yours are still warm. Thanks. She really likes you, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Well, come on. Everyone's outside. No, that's cool. I'll wait here for Michelle. Woo! Wow, Brett, I'm impressed. I doubt you even need that apprenticeship. You could just 
Go be a pro electrician straight yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, all right. Hey, mate. Hey. So, I miss says you moved to the city. How's it working out for you? Big city boy. Yeah, it's heaps of fun. A little bit before all the guys from uni, so there's always someone to hang out and have a beer with. There's something cool on pretty much every night, so we'll just walk down the street, there'll be some trivia night or concert or something. It's kind of noisy all the time, but I think I like it that way. Oh man, I can't wait. I could totally live with four boys. Bet you could. So is this too quiet for you then? Is the rent expensive? It's not too bad. I work two nights a week at a pub and our house isn't the fanciest. The shower's held together with duct tape. If it gets too hard, I can always move back to Macedon. I'm back here most weekends anyway. Good old Macedon. Once I get out of home, I'm never moving back. So, you were the robot in the school play last year, yeah? Tin Man. What's the difference? big bottle you got there? Oh, how'd it go with jam? Pretty much what I thought. Advertising sounds pretty intense. It's five days a week for three years with heaps of homework and placements. I don't know if I'll be able to work while I do it. It's such a great course and I'll be living in the city. I just, I don't know how I'll pay rent. And I told her about the apprenticeship too and she said it sounded good, so. They're both good options, I guess. <laughs> it's only a week now to when I need to have a salon by. And... I don't know, Mish. I don't know. They both sound good, Sarah. I'm sure whatever you choose will be great. Thanks, Mish. Oh. He's cute. Yeah? Definitely. I don't know what you've been talking about. I've always thought he is, but I just didn't... I'll say when. OK. That'll do. Thanks. So, I was talking to Jackson inside. Sarah, what did you say? Nothing, honestly. He did tell me he wasn't sure if he was your boyfriend or not. He said that to you? He used the word technically. Mm. It's okay, I'm sure he wants to be. Just bring it up if you're worried about it. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Hey, you never finished that story. My story? So he's driven all the way from Melbourne just to come and hang out with you for a bit after dinner. And now you're walking. Yeah, and he said hi to my mum. Really? Great. <laughs> yeah, it was really nice. And he held my hand, but like this. And not like this. So I knew he probably <laughs> wanted to kiss me. <laughs> Is that right, Dolly Doctor? <laughs> so did he? Well, we ended up down on the damn jetty. And he held me in this gentle way that I liked. And ran his fingers along my back. It was really romantic. Wow, awesome, Mish. Sounds great. Yeah, and he tried to get us to lie down while we were kissing, but I kind of didn't want to, I guess. It was just so nice standing there and kissing. <laughs> then some guys decided to play cricket on the dance floor, which was pretty fun, except someone smashed a hole in the wall. Anyway, so I woke up in the lounge room floor. My housemate was walking around, bottles on the carpet, stains everywhere, and we just thought, this is way too messy to even start cleaning. It was crazy. And I don't know where my other housemate Ned comes up with this great idea. We could just look up some kind of cleaning company in the yellow pages. Turns out we split the cost. It wasn't even 40 bucks each. And these guys at Van just came and cleaned the whole place for us. Great. Do they work out all right then? Yeah, definitely. It was a great night. Some of the neighbors weren't too happy though. We got some pretty angry mail in the letterbox. What's so great about Macedon? Nobody cares what noise you make. Whoa! <laughs> Must be great living on so much land. Yeah, we've had some pretty great times here. Hey, do you still have that flying fox in the back paddock? Holy shit, I've forgotten about that. It's probably still there. Let's go. Before sunset. Zas, Mish, time for a walk. Ugh, where are we going? Man, this is going to be so good. <laughs> How about that political climate, eh? So, you don't think you'll ever come back to Macedon again? 
What do you mean? Earlier, you said when you leave, you're never coming back. Oh, God, I hope not, yeah. I guess this was a good enough place to grow up, but there's just nothing left for me now. I want to experience new things. I want to travel, meet interesting people, live somewhere within a semblance of culture. If I find myself in five years married with a child and living five minutes down the road from my mum, like half our grade is bound to do, I'll freaking kill myself. You say that, but our parents seem happy. Yours, maybe. Mr. and Mrs. Weir do, sure, but how can they not? They raise the wonder kids and live on this beautiful property. Your mum is always happy. My mum leaves for work at 5am every morning and gets back at 5. She spends the whole day cleaning up other people's shit, literally. Which would be okay if she came home to a place like this, but... She comes back to our little shack in town, which leaks from the roof with the slightest bit of rain. And the one person who ever loved her walked out on her. Now she spends her only days off at the fucking Royal Hotel, trying to find a man who's just maybe as miserable and lonely as she is. Now I love my mum more than anyone else in the world, but she's certainly not happy. And yeah, I know that's not Macedon's fault, but she got brought out here with the promise of the perfect Australian life. A family, beautiful house on land. Dad and her were going to open up a little cafe on the river when they saved enough money. She'd work the counter, he'd cook the food, little family business. Now she's got none of it and she's stuck here. She'll be living in the same house, travelling to the same job until she's 70. She knows it as well as I do. Well. Uh, I... <laughs> it's cool, man. It's the way the cookie crumbles. Love the open air out here. Yeah, you must miss it. Living in your stuffy share house. Hey, fancy city boy. Hey, it's not that stuffy. <laughs> you know what I mean. I think you need to see my apartment before you decide if it's stuffy or not. Why don't you come over next weekend? <laughs> hey, can I ask you something? Yeah, of course, anything. This may sound silly, but... Would you say you're my boyfriend? Um... I'm not exactly sure. Would you like me to be? Definitely. <laughs> me too. <laughs> You're perfect. This can't be the same one. It used to be so much bigger. It's almost like you've grown in the last 10 years. Mate, do you remember back in primary school, I think, like grade four, was sitting in the kitchen and my dad came in and said he'd finish this thing? We ran out here and ended up half an hour late to school that day. Pretty sure we didn't do much else that week. Well, we didn't come all the way out here for nothing. Dude, there is no way this thing's gonna hold your weight. You calling me fat? Go on, do it! I hold no <laughs> responsibility for this. Come on, Brett. Hurt yourself for our amusement. I've got this, guys. This is gonna work. This kind of thing is built to last. This is for you, Sarah. Man. You know, there's nothing sexier than a man with a gun. How about now? Dave Weir, woman hunter. <laughs> You're up, Brett. Four empty bottles of beer on the roof. Four empty bottles of beer. You throw one up. Brett doesn't hit it. Ah, oh, three empty bottles of beer on the roof. Almost, cowboy. I'm not a cowboy. Did uh, Dave tell you about the mentor thing next year? No. They asked me and Dave to come back and help mentor next year. Oh, that's awesome, guys. I can't believe they chose you two. 
Yeah, but as if we aren't going to have better things to do next year. What do you mean? Dude, we're going to have so much going on. We're playing seniors, going to uni parties, who knows what else. We talked about this. Yeah, you're right. Fuck that then. Hell, if you're lucky, I might even introduce you both to some of my hot hairdressing friends. Oh, so you're back on hairdressing again, are you? <laughs> Love this book. It's such great characters. Yeah, it's really good. You're quite the fan. Yeah. <laughs> Mum tried to make me get rid of them, but I couldn't do it. <laughs> Can't believe how organised everything is. Oh yeah, should it be messier? No, of course not. I love your room. It's the top five. <laughs> Who's that? Oh, that's Shane, my cousin. He's a dancer. That was at the opening of one of his concerts in Sydney last year. He's pretty amazing. He's... <laughs> He's pretty amazing. You're pretty amazing. Yeah, but like, I don't get to see him anymore, which sucks. He had to move up to Sydney, so I'll probably only see him at Christmases. It was so cool, the last time I saw him, this little girl came up after the show and asked for his autograph. It was like he was famous. <laughs> you were so good in the school play last year. Really? Thanks. I didn't know you saw it. I wish I could act or dance. Or was even just creative. <laughs> it's never too late to start. You should join the theatre group at your uni next year. You take these photos? Yeah, most of them. What do you mean you haven't done anything creative? These are really, really good. Seriously? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson. I'm sorry. It's not that, it's just... Okay. I don't know if I'm ready for... It's totally fine. You can wait as long as you want. Thank you. I'm sure I will be, I just need to take it slow. Hello. <laughs> Nice hair, Brett. Thanks. Yeah, it looks good, man. No, it doesn't. Hey! No, it looks awesome, sir. You're really good at this. I can't believe how talented you are. Oh, I'm not that good. Hey, first star. I used to know what all the constellations were called, remember? I've forgotten now. In your old age. Hey, there's another one. How good is this, eh? Hey? You stare long enough, you sort of think there must be something up there, eh? I mean, I know it's just gas, but they twinkle so brightly. I mean, not like other forms of life, just something up there is real, is alive. All right, Einstein. Yeah, they're just stars, man. Well, what do you think, ponytails? Pigtails. Oh, I don't know. They just... They just twinkle, right? It's just the sky, and the sky has to have stars, because that's what the sky has. Wouldn't it make no sense if there were no stars? It wouldn't be the sky then. I read an article suggesting that stars actually project images down onto Earth and that us and everything we know is actually an incredibly advanced hologram. Yeah, right. They're pretty anyway. How about we all agree on that? That's an actual fact? Yeah, they're really romantic. This is the life, you know? This is what you want to do. Get together and do this right now. Drink beer. I mean, our parents get together and sit around a table and play charades and talk about the price of petrol. Can you imagine? No thanks. Ah, charades. Yeah, just because you're an adult doesn't mean you have to stop being cool. You can be more cool. You can do what you want. But all the adults I know, it's like they finally grow up and reach freedom and they start taking everything so seriously. It's so dumb. Come on, it's time for the fire. Come on, Jax. Oh, it's all right. Come on. How gallant those men, bravely venturing forth to battle the dangerous foe with its flames and kindling 
I'm just so thankful their kind exist to save us damsels from harm. Oh yes, they are big and they are strong. I'm just so glad I can cook and clean their things while they're away. At least it's some form of repayment. Yes, I'll clean this gun. A man always needs a clean gun. <laughs> Have you ever had a shot? Dad never took me. He only ever takes Dave. Oh, go on. You think so? Yeah, just don't point it at us and we'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Go. <laughs> I'm going to be the first person on Mars. Mish. You could do anything you put your mind to. You're the best, Sarah. <laughs> well, shall we go see what the almighty men are up to? I bet Captain Jackson would be pretty stoked to catch a glimpse of those. <laughs> oh, I've got this, mate. Ah, oh, here they are. <laughs> oh, gee, it's not working. Oh, no, it's usually so easy. What could be wrong? Do yeah, you want me to have a shot now? No, no, I can padre. It's OK. I've got an idea. Hey, Jackson, man, you want to smoke? Dave, what are you doing? All right, Dad does this all the time. You mean he did it once in winter? <laughs> Corporal, secure the area. Take cover! Looks like a quality guitar, man. Isn't it funny how the only cool instrument is a guitar? What about drums? Okay, or drums. It's like all the instruments are these things that make sound. But then you look at all the ones those band kids play in school, like clarinets or trumpets or something, and they're super lame. Guitar or drums, though? Still just things that make noise, but they're super cool. Maybe that's the thing, Sass. I think it's the school band that's a bit lame, not the instruments. Yeah, a trumpet can be pretty cool. What about Miles Davis? Yeah, Louis Armstrong. What a wonderful world. <laughs> okay, maybe it's the people then. I guess all those band kids like Stacy and Laura just make anything uncool. Yeah, Marco has to kiss her in the school play, did you hear? Who? Laura Ford. What? That's fucking awesome. What kind of kiss? Kisses in plays mean nothing. I doubt she's even kissed anybody before. What are they doing for the play this year? I think it's called The Crucible or something. All I know is it's about witches. Plays are always about stuff like that. I know the Crucible. Patrick Miller's a genius. How do you know so much stuff? Why don't you play something, Jax? Yeah, um, yeah sure, all right. I'm not that good. <laughs> yes, he is. I wish I could play guitar. I can play piano. Really? I totally forgot about that. Yeah, I did lessons for six years. You were pretty good, Mish. I still think you shouldn't have stopped. It was taking out way too much of my study time. We still play footy, managed to find time for study. Yeah, that's because you ace exams without studying because you're smart and annoying. What about me? You're a lost cause, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> Which one should I play? I like the one you showed me yesterday. All right. Scarborough Fair Past the 
write that? Uh, nah, it's Simon and Garfunkel. Classic song. Yeah, good work, man. Anyone need a drink? Yeah. Save again? Yes, please. Hey, Sarah, have you changed your mind about next year again? I'm sorry? Are you sticking with hairdressing or have you decided you're going to be a paleontologist now? What the fuck? So when what they... is a paleontologist anyway? When they look at people's feet. <laughs> you're such a fucking idiot. Have you got a decision to make? Yeah, kinda. I'm pretty sure I want to do this advertising course I applied for, but there's also this hairdressing apprenticeship I've been offered. If I'm ever trying to make a decision, I like to flip a coin. Someone told me to do it once and it's worked a lot for me. You flip the coin and as soon as it lands, if you feel good, you know that's the right choice. And if you feel uneasy, you know you should go with the other side. Easy. That actually doesn't sound like a bad idea. I have a coin. 50 cents. I don't want to do it right now. Yeah, it's been really fun. Got a fire going and... Oh, I wish you were here too, Kimmy. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's in for right. A bit hard to know what he's thinking sort of thing, but, you know, lives in a share house and all that. Sounds like it wouldn't be a bad idea at all. Yeah, with a few friends. Be amazing. Wouldn't you want to live with a whole bunch of people? Oh, well, I guess it doesn't matter right now anyway, eh? I'd, um... I'd better let you get back to the party. Uh, I'll see you Sunday. Yeah, I can't wait to see you too. I love you too. What's that? Oh, uh, yeah, it does sound like a really pretty cake. Wow, yeah. Such a lot of cherries. Berries. Berries, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. All right, I better go. All right, bye. Care to turn all the lights off. Yeah, that's right. And so, with his faithful dog by his side, he walks towards the room. There's nobody else around. He enters, walks to the centre of the room, and the dog, the dog which never under any circumstances leaves his side, waited, snarling at the doorway. No matter what the electrician did, he couldn't get the dog to enter the room. Fuck. So what happened? What do you mean, what happened? That's it. It kind of makes sense there'd be a ghost hanging around an old jail. Yes, the native ghost is often sighted at old jails and abandoned swimming pools. <laughs> when bored, they may leave this habitat to haunt past lovers. <laughs> My housemate Adam, who that whole story happened to, swears it must have been a ghost. He does street art and he has tattoos up both of his arms. It's the thing, in the city there's just art and creativity everywhere you look. It's overwhelming. I hate art. I'm bored. Who wants to go for a swim? Sure, why not? No way, it'll be fucking freezing. Don't be a pussy, dude. <laughs> no way, man. What about you guys? No, thanks. You guys enjoy, though. Oh, we will. <laughs> Did you have a pair of boardies at the moment? Yeah, man, I'll get you some. <laughs> dude, just be honest. Do you think she likes me or not? I don't know, man. Just take it easy. Don't make a big deal of it. Why shouldn't she go for it? Thanks. We should do this more. This is awesome. Sometimes I like this more than the big party. Yeah, I should try and get my parents away more often. Try and convince them to have four anniversaries a year. <laughs> Genius. Can you do a flip? Front or back? Front. Nope. Back? No. <laughs> Dad! <laughs> hey, guys. Hey. They look good on you, man. I think red's your colour. It's beautiful in here. Come on, cowboy. Well, you two kids have fun. <sighs> I'm getting another beer. Got me one, dude. <laughs> Shit, it's cold. I kind of like it. Yeah, me too. Dave. Any 
Anybody want a drink? No, I'm good, thanks, mate. No, thanks, Dave. Sweet. I like your brother. Yeah, he's awesome. I don't know what I'd do without him. What's his girlfriend like? Yeah, lovely. Really nice. Really good for him, I think. She's very pretty. You're quite pretty yourself. Well, you are. <laughs> what? Nothing. <laughs> Come on, what? What? Oh, we've only known each other for seven weeks now, and I think, like, maybe I see things differently. Does that make any sense? Yeah, totally. Wow. So, like, the other night I was thinking that maybe instead of just applying locally, it could be cool to go to uni in the city, maybe. I love this town. I mean, I grew up here, but I can't help but want to see what's out there. There's so much. And you make me see that, I think. I'm glad I make you feel that way. I think everyone should be free to do what they want. Might be my muse. Hey guys. Zas wants to play a game and apparently we all need drinks. We could. Would you mind bringing my beers out, man? Sure. You want me to get something, Mish? Uh, yeah, there's a bottle of vodka open on the bench. Do you think Mum and Dad will notice that it's gone? Of course not. The bottle's probably been there since they were in high school. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks. Do you think they ever stole alcohol from their parents? Oh, I don't know about their parents, but. Dad told me he stole a bottle of bourbon from the general store once. What? What a rebel. When did he tell you this? A couple years ago. Can't remember. Pretty crazy to imagine Dad doing that now, hey? So, what's news, Brad? What's the goss? Oh, nothing much. You know how it is. Footy, school. Yeah. Beer, parties, hanging out with Dave. Well, come on. How's life treating you? Are you happy? What are you, a psychologist now? What about the ladies? How are they treating you? <laughs> yeah, they're not really treating me at all lately, actually. Oh, that's a shame. Those ladies don't know what they're missing, do they? Ugh. <laughs> 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 oh. Man, I hate swimming in my underwear. Yeah, that must be... Well, come on. You must have one story to tell me. Um... Well... Yes? Uh... Um... Come on. I won't tell anyone. I promise. Okay, especially Dave, though. He'd kill me. Mm, sounds exciting. Seriously. Okay. Well... Okay, so you know Jess Samuel had her 18th last year? Yeah. So, me and Dave were pretty bored that night and we decided to rock up to see what was going on. Um, Dave got a bit drunk. Actually, Dave got really drunk and he hooked up with Laura Ford in the backyard. No way. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Wow, what the fuck? How did that happen? They just kind of wound up by themselves talking outside, I think. I went and sat with them for a bit, but they're having some discussion. I went and looked for Dave later, because I was chatting with people inside, but I couldn't find him. Oh, but then I decided that I needed to take a piss behind the shed, because you know how it's kind of fun when you're drunk. But Dave and Laura were there and they were, you know, kissing each other. Oh, this is too good. I can't believe this. Yeah, you know what else? Craziest part is they saw each other a few times afterwards. Dave didn't want to tell me, but I got it out of him. Just had the feeling something more was going on after Jess's You mean party. they saw each other? Mm. Sounded like they really got along. I don't think 
think I've ever seen them even talk to each other. Yeah, hardly anyone knows. Oh, it's so weird of Dave to do something in secret like that. Yeah, I know. I bet she totally fell in love with him. Uh, so do you want to tell me a secret now? It's cold. I think we should go play this game. It's going to be fun. You coming? Yep. So it's called I Never. Oh, yeah. The girls at work were talking about it. Sounded like heaps of fun. Apparently, everyone plays it at uni. OK, so basically, let's say I start. I'll say I've never been to school. And then you all have to drink because you've all been to school. And then Dave says, I've never... Uh, OK. I've never been eaten by a bear. <laughs> OK, so in that case, nobody would drink. Don't think you really understand the game, man. So wait, do we have to have done the thing we say we've never done, or do we have to have not done it? That doesn't matter. All that matters is if you have done it, you drink. All right, let's do this. I've never been shocked by an electric fence. Do I have to drink for every time I've done it? All right, I've never thrown up from drinking. <laughs> <laughs> How good is this game? I've never nicked stuff from the school canteen. Hey! <laughs> When was this? Year eight. We made out like bandits. Two whole boxes of Mars bars. Hey, you told me you won those in a spelling bee. I don't think this town has ever had a spelling bee. I used to be so gullible when I was younger. I believed everything that he told me. It was ridiculous. Remember when I told you it was Mum's birthday? She got so upset that she hadn't bought her a present, so she spent the whole afternoon baking her a chocolate cake. When Mum got home, she yelled, Happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're so adorable, Mish. <laughs> hey, we miss my go. I've never given a hand job at a party. Whoa. Okay, okay, or received one. You people are disgusting. <laughs> wow, okay, uh, that's a pretty hard act to follow. Um, I've never kissed someone else here. <laughs> oh, <Brett. laughs> okay, um. I've never been on a nudie run. Oh, man, what are we doing? We should totally do one tonight. Sure, why not? Uh, yeah, OK. <laughs> I might need a few more of these first. What? Awesome. I'm holding you to that, Mish. It's your go. All right, I've never had a crush on a teacher. Oh, yes. Mm. I'd go for Mr Monero in a heartbeat. Mr Monero. Definitely. What? He's old. He's mature and sophisticated and handsome. He's the kind of man who'd be able to prepare a meal. I imagine he lives alone in a big house that's really nice and full of old books. No, he's married. He's actually got a son who's about our age, apparently. Oh. He's probably got grey hair like his dad. Someone's jealous. No, I'm not. Come on, it's your question. OK. I've never had sex anywhere that wasn't a bed. Come on then, Sass. Tell us a story. Well, I guess there's a couple. <laughs> All right, which is the weirdest place? Uh, costume cupboard, drama building. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Who wins? Not Mr. Monero. I <laughs> know, this guy, Jonathan? Not Jonathan Gardner. Yeah, him. What? I was in productions with him all through high school. He never told me about that. Was it during class? Science double period. How do you know him? Well, we met at a party and got talking and hooked up a bit and then I ran into him one lunchtime and was kind of like, are you thinking what I'm thinking, you know? Costume cupboard was his idea. <laughs> Amazing. He was really cool. Man, that guy can do accents better than anyone I've ever met. Did you mind in a Scottish accent, Sarah? Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> they have the coolest clothes in that room. All these old school dresses and colourful suits and funny props. So much fun. I really want to go back and take some stuff right before we finish school. If you do, could you get my T-Man outfit while you're in there? I'd love to have that back. Hey, you took a drink too, Jackson, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not much of a story, really. Come on, at least tell us where. No, just on a couch. Pretty boring. Cool, man. Did you drink, Dave? Nope. Just beds. Good old beds. Brett? Nah, I didn't drink. But, um, yeah, just like what Dave said. OK. I've never 
fantasised about being married. Like, you know, maybe with a specific person, thinking about what your day-to-day -day life would be like with them and coming home to your house after a day of work or imagining your actual wedding day and what you would say about them in your speech and just, like, seriously actually pictured the married life in your future. So you mean just thought about marriage at all? Yeah, I guess so, but in a daydream kind of thing where you can see a future version of yourself, like, in it. And in the daydream, you know who your husband or wife is. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, doesn't everybody dream about the future in some way? I mean, thoughts like that just creep into your head. It doesn't mean it's what I've got my heart set on necessarily, but I imagine Kim and I living together once or twice. Yeah, like when I see mum and dad having a cup of tea and nice conversation in the kitchen at the end of the day, looking so peaceful together. It's weird to think that one day I'll be in that position. Have you ever thought about it at all? I suppose when I think about the future, it's always very vague and wispy. I've imagined doing particular things like skydiving or living in a shack by a river for a year, but it's not really connected in this, like, linear trajectory. I like to live in the moment, mainly. Isn't it crazy how when you meet someone, you don't know them at all? And they could become the most important person in your life. And, like, one tiny event can change everything. Like, if Dad hadn't stopped on the side of the road to help Mum's friend Judy that night, things would be so different. Yeah, totally. If Dad didn't know how to change a tyre, you and me wouldn't be here. But if your dad didn't know how to change a tyre, then he wouldn't be your dad. Oh, that's profound, Brett. <laughs> but you're right, though. It's not just one little disconnected moment. To the universe, the day Dave and Michelle's dad learned to change the tyre is no more insignificant than the day Michelle and Dave were born. 13 minutes apart. It's cool to think that our most significant moments might have happened already, and we don't even know it. I think it's all just as significant as you make it. You mentioned the universe, but I don't think the universe cares at all. It's not lining up the tire changing moment and all that in some sort of plan. It's, it's up to the individual to make something out of what's at hand. We have no inherent purpose, and that's not depressing. That's exciting. But it's impossible to know. And don't you think sometimes things that we might call coincidences that occur in our lives are slightly just too much to be chance? I mean, haven't you ever had deja vu or a kind of premonition or felt like you were meant to be in a particular place? That's your decision to view the world that way. And if viewing the world as one without coincidences helps you understand it and makes you happier, then that's great. But really, Albert Camus described the world as absurd because it has no meaning. We aren't given any kind of instructions to what we should do with our lives. But he said we should embrace that and just have a great time in spite of our purposelessness. Cool. So we have absolute freedom. Totally. Have you read much Camus? Only a little. My English teacher said she thought I'd really enjoy reading his books. You should. I can lend you one if you want. I had a dream once. It wasn't about my wedding, but it was at Dave and Kim's wedding. It was on a boat. <laughs> I had to give the best man speech, but then all that would come out was howling. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, it's my go, right? Um, I've never been able to take a girl's bra off with one hand. Are you serious? It's fucking tricky, all right? I just don't get them. Bullshit, it's just a little class. All right, give me a shot. OK. Does seem you need the practice. <laughs> there you go. Hey, yo! You have to drink now. All right. I've never prayed. Prayed? Yeah, for anything. To anything, a god, anyone. Yeah, I have. It was when Emma was in hospital. Her sister. She was going in for this operation and I was in the waiting room. There was this beige white room with fake flowers in every empty space and all the Cosmos there were like two years old. There weren't many people around. Mum had gone to the bathroom or something and there was some old guy who was like, crying in a corner and I just wish that I could be there with her, do something, you know? So I thought, like, whatever, I'm just gonna pray. And I just closed my eyes and asked for her to come through okay. Was she okay? Well, yeah, you saw me with her the other day, remember? Oh, yeah. So did you feel like the prayer helped? Totally. The next day when we were allowed to go in and see her, we'd had hardly any sleep and I went in and hugged her in the bed and I could really feel something there with us. I was trying to explain it to Mum on the way home. God really had your back. 
Well, I guess I didn't pray to God necessarily, just to the universe, you know? Put it out there to whoever was willing to listen. Cool. It's really special. Oh, so it doesn't have to be to a god then? Um, no, definitely not. Cool. I thought it probably didn't, but I wasn't sure. I think I've prayed then. I've definitely squeezed my eyes shut really tight before and hoped for particular things to happen. Like what? Well, just different things. More so when I was younger. I used to go to church every week with my parents. Cool. Yeah, it was all right. I mean, we always prayed there, obviously. <laughs> then when I was 15, mum and dad said it was up to me whether I continued to go or not, so I just went the next couple of times and I stopped. Whole life is just one decision after the other, man, and the only person making them is you. Mate, some of the stuff you say just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's your go, Mish. I've never, until the age of 16, believed there are still some dinosaurs in existence. <laughs> nah, bet there are, right? Not in the wild, but there's a place in America that has some in captivity. They're not like T-Rexes or anything, but... Mr. Matthews told us. Dude, are you serious? <laughs> We've been through this. He told us crocodiles are descended from dinosaurs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what about that place, then? I don't know what place you're talking about. You don't mean Jurassic Park? No, not Jurassic... Anyway, it's my turn. Um, I've never snuck into a nightclub underage. It's getting pretty cold. Yeah, let's go inside, eh? Good game, Sass. Yeah, good sash. Hang on. I've got one more. Uh. I've never hooked up with somebody and kept it a secret. Wait, what's going on? You asshole. Sorry, dude, it just slipped out. What's going on? <sighs> All right, um... It was at the start of the year. Brett and I were at just Samuel's 18th. Oh, I think I know her sister. Yeah, probably. Anyway, I got pretty wasted and then I ended up kissing Laura Ford. Whoa. Who's Laura Ford? She's a girl in our year. Cool. Yeah, she's really into drawing and stuff. She's nice, but just a bit hard to get along with, I guess. She seems a bit strange, but in that way where you probably just don't know her that well. Do you know what I mean? Jeez, that's an understatement. She's a freak. She hangs out by herself and she has no friends. Come on, she's not that bad. She's not attractive, that's for sure. You're on thin ice, dude. She's hotter than the girl you kissed that night. I didn't kiss anyone that night. Exactly. Well, well, that's a vivid picture you've all painted. I feel like I can really imagine her. Brown hair, short, wearing a dress with um, pictures of cats on it. Yep, thanks. She's cool, just a bit different, you know? Yeah, exactly, thank you. Look, if you actually take the time to get to know her, she's really interesting and cool to hang out with. She's got a surprisingly good sense of humor. She taught me quite a bit. I really think it's just that no one's given her a chance because everybody in our year is a jerk. And it's a chicken and egg situation, you know? It's like people tease her just because she's one of those people in the year. Like Zagman, kind of. Yeah, like Louis Zagman, too. People tease them because they're those people, the ones that everybody just picks on. But then they feel all weird, so they act weird, and everybody just picks on them some more. Yeah, that's astute. We're all jerks, really. Anyway, we've been having a really good chat, Laura and I, and I was a bit drunk, and we ended up by ourselves, and we just felt it. You know how that happens? You know what? I don't regret it at all. Wait, Brett told me you saw him more than once. Yeah, I saw her two or three more times. And then she broke up with you? As if Laura would break up with Dave. Dude, shut up. You guys were actually dating and you never told me we're about it. We're dating, we're just kind no, of just... Do you want to tell the story, huh? Were you the one hanging out with her? Maybe she gets something else going on. So you have to spend all your time spreading my secrets to try and get into Sarah's pants, which is pathetic and is never going to happen. Whoa, Dave, come on, man. What's the matter to anyone who I'm with, anyhow? All right, all right. 
Yeah, we went out a couple of times. I broke it off because I wasn't into it developing into a proper thing. Any more questions? Should we head inside? Wait, so it's in this one? It's in one of them. I don't know. All right, so we've got some tomato, we've got some ham, and we've got cheese. Nice. What do you think of Jackson? Yeah, he's growing on me. She looks pretty happy. So, first love, I guess. How long do you think it'll last? I don't know. She really likes him. Maybe they'll get married. <gasps> <laughs> How long have you and Kim been together now? Almost six months. Whoa, really? Time flies. You're still not getting bored at all. No, I think that's just you. <sighs> Do you think you two will get married? God, I've no idea. Sometimes she'll say something about our wedding day, who we'd invite, that kind of stuff. She's even gone on about driving kids to footy practice or dressing them in cool baby outfits. <laughs> and yeah, I guess I'm not scared by it all. I mean, that's where life really begins, right? But definitely not in the next year or two. Yeah, wow. Shotgun best man. <laughs> You might have to rock, paper, scissors up with Brett, but... Oh, even after the drama we just had outside? I wasn't sure you guys would ever talk again. <coughs> so, should I, then? Uh... Hey, man, easy. The two of you are clearly best mates, and this is a tiny misunderstanding. I'm sure if you say sorry now, you've forgotten it even happened in the morning. Thanks. I think Dave will have forgotten most of tonight by the morning. <laughs> to intoxication! Okay, I'm gonna go say sorry then. Good luck. You're a big softy at heart. What a great guy. Yeah, he's really going to do well, I think. I think I'm a bit intoxicated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm intoxicated. By you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so maybe you were right. I told you so. I'm the fucking king of toasties. I think they're still good. <laughs> All right, yeah, we'll just have some well done toasties then. <laughs> I'll have mine medium rare, if that's okay. Oh, I might just take this well done toasted sandwich out this way then. Hey, man. Look, Brett, I'm really sorry about what I said before. I was way out of line. It wasn't all meant to just come out like that. Oh, that's... I actually came in here to apologise to you as well. It's just about to you cut me off. <laughs> I think we're all good then? Yeah, for sure, man. Sarah just has a knack of getting things out of me. I don't even no, know how no, it came no, up. No, 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 no worries, man. Sass has a knack with most guys and she knows it. Dude, she's obsessed with me. Sarah? No. Laura, you idiot. Sarah's obsessed with you. Really? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, dude. What do you mean? Well, she texts me a fair bit. It's kind of weird. She'll send me a message saying that she misses me or something. A couple of weeks ago, she sent me a photo of the Nook, which is where we hung out a couple of times. Most of the time, she's just filling me in on what she's up to or sending me her latest drawing. How often? Like a few days, I guess. Kind of freaking me out, man. A few weeks ago, she put a mixtape in my locker. Not a CD, a tape. And what type of music was on it? I don't have a tape player. Do you have a tape player? Dude, I can't believe you haven't told me this. She's not. You just need to tell her to leave you alone. I try to just ignore it, but it's hard, you know? I mean, it's no big deal. We're still kind of friends. 
The crazy thing is, but if I make any kind of approach at school, like a wave or a hello, she just turns her back as if I don't exist. So wait, you're telling me that ever since last year, she sent you a text every few days? Yeah, but that's normal for friends. Sometimes it's just a bit... <sighs> I don't know, it's probably fine. U.S. forces give a nod. <laughs> Why don't you guys make up already? Thanks, boys. I love toasted. Hey, you want me to teach you, man? <laughs> no, good. Hey, let's play charades. Oh, you're kidding, right? Shotgun being on Jackson's team. What? You gotta be quicker than that. All right, all right, fine. Can we be the judge or something? You know, this is what our parents do for fun. You have to write down all the suggestions, Dave. You need a hat, pen, and paper. Go. <laughs> Bretsky, truth or dare? <laughs> really? Truth or dare? Dare. I dare you to skull the rest of Michelle's drink. Easy. Hey. <laughs> Jesus, what's in this? Vodka and orange juice. Only not much orange juice. <laughs> Don't say. <laughs> no, that's toxic, that is. Weak. Oh, come on, man. No chance you do it. Sure. We should enjoy being delinquents while it's still cool. You're on my team. Let's beat these scoundrels. You're not a scoundrel. I'm going first. Time starts now. Um, uh... Come on, go, go, go. Uh, mushroom. Um, uh, toast or grass. <laughs> Insect. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Um, uh, eating sandwich food. Um, a burger. Uh, cheeseburger, hamburger. Yes! Got it. One point to Sassin Jacks. Who's next? Brett. He's the man on the case. Oh, what the hell, man? <laughs> yes. And go. Fish. <laughs> worm. Fish worm. Uh, what's his name? Electric eel! Oh, come on! <laughs> Dave, you're gross! Uh, sex. Thrusting. Fucking. Making love. Ten seconds. There's nothing else I can do! <laughs> Time's up. Oh, Brett, that was spectacular. <laughs> what was it? Missionary position. Oh, that's not fair. All right, Jackson, show them how it's done. You all right? I don't... Oh, good. And time starts now. Hair. Yep. Acting. That is a pro right there. Ah, uh, but behind every great man, there is an even greater woman. Allow me to give you a demonstration. All right, Mish. Go. What? You have to do it anyway, even if you don't know what it means. But it isn't even a thing. What's it say? Have you ever been to America? <laughs> <laughs> wow, Dave, what else is in here? Jupiter? Multiple forks? A wolf on hawks? How do you act them out? Brown and yellow. All right, do it. Wolf on hawks? Got it. Louis Zagman. <laughs> complaint? What does complaint mean, Mish? That's not a word. <laughs> oh, gee. Dave must be at the stage where his brain cells are being affected, hey? <laughs> Looking forward to voting tomorrow. I wish I could vote. Who would you vote for? I don't know. Right on. Ooh, who's messaging Dave at this fine hour? Lame. Kim? Hey, we should totally message someone from Dave's phone. Yeah, let's. <laughs> let's write one and send it. 
Who should we message? His mum. That's my mum too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what if we message your mum? What? Like if we sent the message to your mum? Oh, my mom. God. Laura's number's in here. This is so good. I know exactly what we should write. No way. I don't know about that, Sarah. Don't say anything mean. Dave will kill you. Okay, here we go. Been thinking about that time we got together. You're beautiful. XX. Yes. I guess that's not too bad. It's, it's a compliment. Sarah, don't send that message. Sent. <laughs> You're ridiculous. What's it say? Oh, wow. It's her. What's it say? Is this a joke? Really? Yeah, that's it. Is this a joke? That makes it sound like she hopes it isn't a joke. We totally have to send another one. Are you serious? Oh, come on, Brett. You can help me write this one. This is so much fun. Um... OK, what should I say? Is this a joke? Is this... Say it's not a joke. OK. Not a joke. Want you bad. Can't believe we've wasted the last 12 months. No way. That's good. I think you need to cement the intention of the message. How about, I just broke up with my girlfriend for you? Amazing. Jackson. I think that's too far. Sarah, please don't. <laughs> it's from her. Hurry up. Uh-oh. Is everything all right? She's coming here. What? It says I'll be right around. Does she even know where we live? I'm betting she does. Just tell you were joking. Easy. Problem solved. Are you sure? Well, we have to say something to stop her from coming here. Give it here. All right, all done. Oh, what did you say? Don't be fucking stupid. Of course I was joking. Probably didn't need the expletive, mate. I don't like this. Hey, it's all good now. She's really nice. Heads for hairdressing. Advertising it is. What the fuck? <laughs> I can't believe she actually called. She's keen. Yeah. No way. Why would she have that number? It's probably just mum. Yeah, because mum's always cool at one in the morning. <laughs> Hello, you've called Mary, Peter, Dave and Michelle. We can't come to the phone right now, but please leave a message after the beep. Dave, it's Laura. Please pick up the phone. Dave, pick up. This girl is actually insane. Were you joking or not? Just pick up the phone, Dave. Hello, this is Dave. Yeah, this is Dave. How are you? Um, yeah, sorry about that. I'm drunk. Just forget I said anything. Look, I do think about you all the time. As a friend. <laughs> that was my mum. Yeah. <laughs> I get drunk with my mum all the time. <laughs> anyway, I've got to go, Loz. I'll um, see you at school.
kiss take you out Kiss you on your pretty mouth Make it toast and never go in no And I'm so proud that look you gave me Dancing like you want to take me home Before. Yeah, uh, damn telemarketers. Bastards are cool at any hour, eh? I'm gonna make sure we put out the fire properly. Do you want me to come? Yes. Putting the fire out, eh? I'm going to bed. Good night, lovers. Sleep tight, sweet prince. How are you going? Good. How are you going? I'm sorry about tonight. I thought there'd be more people here and... I know it must be hard meeting all my friends at once like this. Don't be ridiculous. Tonight's been fun. Really? Of course. Seriously? Seriously. Any night I get to see you is an amazing night for me. <laughs> I can't believe how easy this is. Let me see what is. Being with you like this. I always thought I'd be really nervous. Nervous about what? Just, I don't know. <laughs> Being like this, us. I mean. Just like, I don't feel nervous about like, the idea of Getting close. Yeah, and like... <laughs> like what? Like even sex, I guess. I thought you wanted to wait. Yeah, I don't think I do anymore. Really? Yeah, it feels right. Sure. Yes. Not tonight, but yeah. How you doing, Bretsky? I'm all right. <laughs> How about you? I'm just breezing, like a breeze. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Weird if we just lay here naked together. <laughs> okay.
What were you saying about the stars earlier? What do you mean? You know that article you read? No. You're saying that the stars are actually... <laughs> <laughs> What a great night. I think I like this more than the big party. Ah, oh, no doubt. I can't wait until we don't have to hang out with half the school every weekend. <laughs> How funny was Dave tonight? It's been a while since I've hung out with him properly without Kim around. <laughs> I love drug Dave. Man, I had the biggest crush on Kim last year. Yeah, I know. What? Are you kidding? Everybody knew. It was pretty obvious. How did she know? I don't know if she knew. Probably. It's just the way you acted around her. You laughed at anything she said that was remotely funny and, let's face it, she's really not that funny. <laughs> <laughs> you all of a sudden, like a band she mentioned, even if you hadn't heard of them, you'd, you'd tease her, but then as soon as she seemed the slightest bit hurt, you'd apologise if you'd just run over her puppy. You'd touch her at any given uh, opportunity. OK, OK. <laughs> you just couldn't take your eyes off her. Yeah. Dude. It's not just you. Every single guy is exactly the same. You're all transparent. Then what am I doing so differently? If I'm just like Dave and every other transparent guy, then how come I never get the girl? You will. Don't worry. I just have no idea how to talk to girls. Just like this. What are you doing right now? Yeah, I guess. We're really not that different a species. You just gotta loosen up and not dwell on whether a girl likes you or not, Bretsky. Just, if you just talk to her and be yourself, more often than not, she will. You think? I do. Honestly. Oh, and make sure you listen. It's such a simple thing, but it's incredible how many guys have this like blank look on their face when you're talking to them. Almost like they're like, scheming their next move, rather than actually taking an interest in what the two of you are talking about. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Brett. You're cool. You've just got to have some faith. You OK? Yeah. I think I'm going to decline the apprenticeship tomorrow. <laughs> Really? I think so, yeah. Wow, that's huge. So you're set on going to uni then? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a hell of a lot harder, but it's what I really want. So you're moving to Melbourne too? Another one down. I guess so, yeah. Congestion, pollution suits, here I come. Maybe I'll move in with Jackson. Really? Does he have a spare room? Of course not. I don't know where I'll live. Half of Year 12 moves there every year and, well, most of them have more money than I do and it's meant to be a lot harder to get a decent job in the city, but I'm sure I'll figure all of that out, though. If anyone could do it, it's you, sis. Thanks, Brett. I'm really going to miss you guys. Did you want a drink? Um, yeah, thanks. A beer.
Classic red, yeah. Yellow sand, right? Blue water. Oh, yeah, coastlines, of course. The spade. Oh, yeah, sounds good. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, of course I am. Sorry, I'm just a bit drunk. You know, it's really late. It's like... Oh, it's really late. What are you still awake for? Ow. Ow, ow, ow. Um, yeah, cool, sorry. Um, anything good? <coughs> Is everything all right? What are you doing here? Rising. Laura, what are you... It's been a while, eh? You are... You're trying to give me a heart attack or something, because... I think you might have succeeded. Well, Laura, do you... Oh, Laura, this is deep. Uh, come on. Um, let's get this cleaned up. Laura, come on, we've got to put pressure on this. You're losing a lot of blood right now. Are you sure you're not the one that could use a little looking after? You seem pretty worse for wear, mate. Oh, yeah. That's true. Big night, huh? Oh, yeah, I guess just, just a few of us. Will you let me take a look at your hand? It's nice to see you. All right. You know you could have just knocked, right? You're dripping in it, Dave. What? What, what am I dripping in? Fuck, Dave! This is serious. Listen oh, to okay, me. Okay, Laura, I'm listening. What's what's going on? I can't bear it. I'm I'm missing it all, Dave. The best years of our lives. That's what everyone keeps telling us, isn't it? Our teachers, our parents. My dad offered me a glass of wine tonight. Even my parents understand, and and people like your friends. Hey, hey guys, come on. Your friends just seem to love reminding me of how, how pathetic, how outcast, how awful I am. And I, I don't even, I don't even know what I've done to well, them. What are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> That's not even the main thing. I just, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for it all to pass. I'm, I'm waiting at school. I'm waiting at home. Just, just waiting for everything to fly by. All of the... All of the, the laughing, the silly pranks, going to the movies, the, the texting, rolling down hills, play, playing, playing spin, spin the, the bottle. Or, Nobody plays spin well, the bottle. How am I supposed to know that? I just know that if someone gave me the chance to do it, I, I, I could do it. I could be a teenager. I could be alive. I just... Laura, Laura we've just been hanging out. Nothing big. Okay, nothing memorable. We've been doing nothing, really. I don't even know what it's like to be doing that. But I know that it's what being this old is all about, and I know that this is the most special and electric and magical. And we're going to spend the rest of our lives powered by, by, by the freedom and, and, and the wilderness of of, of these years, and, it, and, and it's gonna burn! Hey, Laura, gonna... look, why don't you come along to the next one of these things, if you really want? But like I said, it's really nothing. What? What, are you stupid? Are, are, are you kidding? What, so you and your friends can laugh at me? I wasn't even here, We've just been just... sitting around talking about how bored we are. I don't know what freedom you're talking about, Laura, but I sure as hell don't see it. We're doing nothing more than having a few drinks, Holding hands and waiting for our lives to actually begin. That, that's, that's what I'm talking about, Dave. Having a few drinks, holding hands with these people that you're so extremely close with. That, that sounds like an ideal moment in a life to me. Oh uh, yeah, I don't know. 
Look, I'm worried about you. <laughs> it's pretty strange for you to just turn up like this. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind. Well, I mind slightly about the window, but... <sighs> What's going on? You've just got to try and enjoy things, okay? You've just got to try and chill out. I think you're really cool. No, you Lord. don't. Yeah, I do. Everyone else will figure it out. They're just a bit slow. You've just got to think more highly of yourself, okay? Look, I know people give you a hard time and all that, but hey, maybe it's that whole grass is greener thing. Or maybe you're having a fantastic teenage or just a different kind. <laughs> grass is greener? What, you, you want to swap? Look, in the blink of an eye, we're all going to be adults and we're going to be too weighed down to truly fly. And I just want to fly just once before, before that what? happens. I don't know what to say. <sighs> can you... Can you just hold me again? This feels like a teenager moment. I don't know. I think, really, we'll all be glad when this strange teenage chaos is over. Seriously, we're nearly there. We're nearly adults. Oh, hey, 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 <laughs> hey. Shh, 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 shh. It's gonna be all right. I know it fucking sucks right now. We all can look back upon these years and be so fascinated by them because no matter what they were, they made you who you are. It's true, Laura. You're gonna get through this and it's all gonna be fine. Huh? I have a feeling that you're about to find a way in. Things change all the time. Maybe something awesome is around the corner. Something which would be like what you said, you know, magical and electric. And you definitely deserve it. Nobody should be just waiting away all these years. <laughs> what, what happened to waiting for our real lives to start? You have no idea how amazing you are. <laughs> 